Vampire is an RPG where you play a newly born vampire, Dr. Reed. The year is 1918 and he's struggling to stop the epidemic that is spreading throughout London. I will try to divide this review into concise parts and then we'll do a short overview in the end. Combat. Despite what others are saying, combat in this game felt rather fluid to me. Abilities were easy to read and understand, nothing too difficult, the whole difficulty lies in leveling yourself right, figuring out your build, and what works against what. Closest games to this one in combat would be Dark Souls and The Witcher 3. As I tried not to needlessly consume citizens and to be semi-good, bosses wiped my ass into the floor, however I persevered, changed my strategies and beat this game. I feel like that gave me a huge feeling of satisfaction. I do however believe that not every gamer will be able to beat this game. Be aware. Controls. Preset mappings for keyboard are not that bad actually. Tap to read things, F to interact, a space to dodge. You can set it to different bindings, but I'm afraid you have to do it from the ini file. The biggest issues with keyboard controls was my inability to comfortably walk up to enemies, bad lock-on mechanic and sometimes awkward angles during cutscenes that I could not change, though I had a nice laugh at. Story. This game prides itself on being unable to save scum in order to avoid the consequences of what you choose. This is because all your choices that I was presented with were not black and white. It is easy to choose something that you think is good only for it to have an awful outcome. This did not put me off, in fact I rather enjoyed it. I now have a reason to go back and play this game again seeing different outcomes and endings. NPCs. NPCs in this game have lots of dialogue and a lot of mini stories. In order to do a good ending, you will have to keep them healthy, but I do not think that it's necessary to do all of their little quests or uncover all the conversations. Thank goodness, because some of them are plain boring. Don't get me wrong, there were times when I was really interested in whom I was talking to, but in my 21 hour playthrough I had at least 2 hours of conversations that I hated. Completionists beware. If you want to know everything about a character, sometimes a hint about them is hidden underneath a multiple choice question, and if you choose the wrong dialogue option, you may be forever locked out of that hint. It is, however, completely fluff. Hints do not influence your ending or anything like that, so I was completely fine with that, but some people are unhappy about it. There's also sightseeing events that happen once only, and I have failed one myself by accidentally opening a door during it happening and then it stopped happening. So another thing to look out for. Very easy to miss. Overview. Well, to me, this game is Bloodlines Reincarnate because it scratches a very special itch. I was yearning for a dark, moody vampire game where life can go to shit no matter how hard you try not to let it go to it for so long. Since 2004, in fact. And this game scratched it. A lot of publications named Vampire as an average game, yet here I am feeling the happiest I've felt with a game in 14 years. And to all of you that will look at me like I'm mad for even comparing these games, remember that when Bloodlines released, nobody was happy with it. It was buggy broken and the studio closed before they could even fix it. Yet here we are, 14 years later, and it's a cult classic. I'm going to accept that Vampire could be better though and give it a 9 out of 10. Because for me, this is the game and I don't know how many decades till the next one will make me feel this way again. I hope you enjoyed this review. Agree? Disagree? Please tell me in the comments and please do not be scared away by people calling it a mediocre RPG. It's... Not a mediocre RPG, it would be a mediocre action game though, but if you're an RPG fan, most definitely check it out.